My name's Karen. I just completed this puff quilt to give away as a baby gift. I'm super excited with how it turned out. So today I'm going to share with you how you can make your very own puff quilt. This is a great project. It's not too hard. I was able to complete it in just a few days. So are you ready for an adventure? Let's get sewing. Okay, let's get started by collecting our supplies. Um, this tutorial will help you to make a 34 inch by 40 inch puff quilt. So go and pick out eight coordinating fat quarters. You'll also need two thirds yard of minky for your border material. Um, you could do that out of cotton, you could do it out of flannel. I chose to do mine out of minky. You'll also need a third yard of fabric for behind the puffs. Now this fabric that's behind the puffs is not going to show, so don't stress about that. You could grab anything that you have in your stash. You'll see in the tutorial I used white. You do not have to use white. You'll also need one yard of back fabric for the back of your quilt. You'll need batting, a half pound fiber fill, material or bias tape for the binding. And the way that I cut my fat quarters, I had enough left to to make my bias tape for my binding. Um, if you like to do that, you can do that. You can pick up some extra fabric for that or bias tape, whatever you prefer. Um, some optional supplies that I used were clothespins, spray adhesive for the quilting part, um, and embroidery stabilizers and supplies if you decide to put an embroidery embellishment on your quilt. So collect your supplies and we'll be ready to start sewing. So I've got um, I've chosen eight coordinating fat quarters and I've cut them down into five inch squares and um, I ended up getting nine out of each fat quarter and then the next step is to get your background um, the back of your puffs this fabric won't show up but I just and you can use any fabric but I just wanted to use white because it would look clean while I was working on it even though it won't show up and you'll take your white fabric and you're gonna cut it down into uh, four by four inch squares and go ahead and get that done that's probably one of the hardest parts of this quilt so when you get that done you are well on your way so I finished cutting out of my eight fat quarters I cut them um, into five inch squares so that gave me a total of 72 five inch squares out of my fat quarters and then I took this background fabric Remember, this is for the back of the puffs. It's not going to show. And I cut that down into four inch squares. So I have, <clears throat> excuse me, 72 four inch squares and 72 five inch squares. Hey, so here is my sewing setup. I've got my machine. I've got my back squares. And then in front of me, I placed my front squares. After I sew my square, um, I'll just be able to drop it right here in my little my little sewing bag and I've got my fiber fill next to me so it's easy to just grab what I need and and get sewing. So I'm going to take one of my five inch top top squares and one of my bottom four inch squares. I'm going to start by lining up one of the corners, one of the top corners here. So you've got it lined up Go ahead and stick that in your machine. I'll be sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance. And once it's in there, you'll see, obviously, since they're different size squares, they don't line up. I'm going to take a moment here to line up that corner. We've created this hill. We're going to take that hill and we want to have it come down just like that. So see our corners are still, our corners are still lined up here and we've created this this hill. I'm going to go ahead and sew that. And then I'm stopping, dropping my needle and turning my fabric. Now once again we want to line up our corners. So we create the hill but this time, last time we went down, this time we want our crease to go up like that. Show you that again. We've lined up our corners. We've got this hill. <clears throat> Pinch it and have it go up this time. So everything is in place. You can go ahead and sew that again. Okay. 
Okay, and do that again. Line up our corner. Now, we want our crease to always be the same as what is on the opposite side. So this time to match up, we are going to need to go upwards with our little crease. We've got the hill, pinch it and have it go up. Once everything is in place, you can go ahead and sew that. And just take it all the way to the end. Now <clears throat> we've made a little a little pocket. Now what we're going to do next is I've got my my polyfill here. I'm going to go ahead and put that into the pocket. You don't want to put too much in there. You want to make it a nice soft pocket there. And we're going to go ahead and close it up. And your corners are already lined up. Okay, and remember we want our our crease to be the same as on the opposite side. Go ahead and pinch it and this time what we want to do is bring it down. So that that is the same as on that side. Now we're ready to sew. Okay, you've just completed a complete puff. Um, you'll notice that the creases are the same on opposite sides. Now, um, you might prefer to pin your creases. I think that's an extra step that might make it take longer, and I feel like I could do it just as well holding things in place as I sewed, but that, of course, is an option. So, I finished my, my square. I'm going to throw it down here in my little sewing bag and move on to the next one. So now that you've sewn all 72 of your puffs, you're ready to arrange your quilt um, in the pattern that you like. This is the pattern that I chose and the to do. The next step will be to create your rows. I've created one here um, by sewing the little the puffs together. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. So I've moved my puffs close to where I can reach them so I don't have to get up and down while I'm sewing. And I'm going to grab the first one, the second one. And right sides together and take them and put them into my machine. That's important that I didn't overfill these puffs because I want them to be able to fit under the foot of my, my sewing machine here. Uh, I'm going to drop my needle and I want to sew just to the left here of my, my seam if you can see that because we don't want this extra seam to show when we're done with the quilt. Okay, that was really quite easy. So the next thing I, that I would do is go ahead and grab my next puff and we put right sides together, line them up, drop our needle to the left of our previous seam and so I've gone ahead and I've sewn um, all of my individual rows and it's time to sew them together so what I've got is um, I've put together these two rows of course right sides together and then I've taken and I've used these clothes pins to help hold things um, in place so that I can just all what I want to do is hold down the puffs and just sew right down along the line again just a little bit to the left of the first seam so that we don't have these um, these seams showing in the final quilt. So um, I have one more thing for you to think about before you start sewing um, as you've put in your clothes pins or however you want to hold your rows together. Um, the reason that I've, I've pinned them together is so that my I want my corners when it opens up I want all my my four corners to line up nicely. Okay, so what you'll need is about two-thirds of a yard for your minky or whatever you choose to do your border out of. Um, and my strips I chose to do um, six and a half inches wide. You'll want to take your rotary cutter and your ruler and you'll need to cut two 
um, six and a half inch wide strips that are 24 inches long. And then you'll also need to cut two six and a half inch wide strips that are 40 inches long. Now, these are the measurements for my quilt, how based on how big my top turned out. I always think it's a good idea to um, look at your quilt and measure it and um, make sure that you you have a, enough fabric. Now, I've chosen to add this little applique elephant to my quilt. This is totally optional. I have an embroidery machine and thought it would be a nice touch to add this. So this would be the time to add any embellishments to the borders of your quilt before um, sewing everything together. Again, it's totally optional and you don't have to do it, but it's just a fun little touch that I wanted to add. Okay, I've finished um, with the embroidery of this little embellishment and I am ready to sew the sides onto my quilt. Okay, I've sewn on my the bottom and the top and it's time to attach the sides. You can see I've turned it so that the right sides are together. Now I just need to pin it or close pin it and sew down that side and then do it on the other side. and. I should have a little bit of extra on the end and I will trim that off so that I have a nice square quilt top. Okay, I have now got the top of my quilt pieced. I am very happy with it. The finished quilt is going to be about 34 inches by 40 inches. I've got my batting here. I like a nice thin 100% cotton, but um, it's your preference. You don't even have to put batting in it. Uh, I just prefer having batting. And then I've got my back fabric and I've got one yard of this back fabric. What I like to do um, is I'm going to quilt them together. Now you don't have to do that. It's something that I enjoy doing so I'm going to do that. And let me tell you a little trick about how I, how I quilt. I've got this um, tacky spray. It's just a glue adhesive, spray adhesive. And what I will do is just lightly spray it on my batting to cover the whole thing. And then I'll go ahead and put my back fabric onto here, uh, making sure that this side is up, the print side is up so that it shows. And then I'll just take it right onto my machine and I use my free motion foot or a darning foot and I go ahead and and just quilt it that way. There are lots of tutorials online to teach you um, how to free motion, how to how to quilt with your machine. This I found is a really easy pattern to do, just to kind of follow this. And it goes really quite fast. It's faster than stippling, I find, and it's a really fun pattern. Okay, I've finished quilting the back. I've got this fun kind of double bubble pattern going on. And now it's time to attach the back to the front of quilt my quilt. And to do that, I'm going to use my regular sewing foot. And I'm just going to sew um, all the way around this main part of the quilt. Just to make sure everything stays in place. After you've connected the front of your quilt to the back of your quilt, you'll want to go ahead and do your binding. There are lots of different ways that you can add a binding to a quilt and I would suggest um, if you have any questions on that just to go ahead and Google that. There's tons of YouTube videos. I chose to um, make my binding um, with the scraps that I had left over from my fat quarters and it was just enough to make a fun binding that goes all the way around my quilt. And now I have a completed baby quilt that I'm super excited to give away.